Hi there, Sandra here from the Schwoben's Nest. Thanks for joining me today. My first project is using this little teapot that I picked up for $3.99 at the thrift store. It's cute the way it is. It's sort of an off-white color and it has some little pattern on it and plus it's got some florals but of course it's still not farmhouse enough for me so I'm going to give it about three coats of white chalk paint and I'm doing three very thin coats because this is a really slippery ceramic and I probably should have done a coat of Mod Podge first but it did end up sticking pretty well once I had the three thin coats done. I'm going to be doing some printing on tissue paper and I thought I would take you through the complete process. If you already know how to do this, feel free to jump ahead, but I've had a lot of viewers commenting that they'd like to know how I'm doing it. So this is the first step. You're gonna take a piece of printer paper and then cut just regular gift wrap tissue paper into a size that's about as you can see here about a half an inch or an inch smaller than your printer paper tape it all the way across the top and this is the top part that's going to be going into your printer first then you're going to want to do about part way down the sides and a little bit down at the bottom you can see here that I keep smoothing it out and making sure that I don't have any bubbles in it sometimes you can't make it totally flat, that's okay, but you wanna try and get it as bubble free as possible. Next, you'll need to put your item that you're going to be printing, your graphic, your image, onto some type of word processing document. I'm using Google Drive. By all means, if you have a Mac, use what's native to the Mac, or you can use Microsoft Word as well. You're going to insert that image right onto your document. You're going to resize it if you need to. I need this to be just a little bit smaller, so I click on it and then drag the image smaller using those arrows in the corner. Next, I'm going to want to center the image on the page just to make sure that I don't have any of my image going off the tissue paper or onto the tape. Next, I'm going to copy this image and paste another one right below it. I do this because sometimes my printer does do some smudging and then I can choose which image looks the best. Finally, I'm going to go to my file menu and I'm going to click the print button and send it to my printer, making sure that I have my paper already inserted. Next, I'm going to cut out what I want and I'm choosing the bottom image. I'll save that top one for another project down the road. Using a smaller pair of scissors so I have more control, I'm going to be cutting out all the way around the image and I usually leave about an eighth of an inch white space on the tissue paper itself. You don't want to have too much extra and the other thing you want to remember is make sure you have rounded edges. So even if your image is square, round off those edges because they will just lay so much nicer onto your project. When I'm working with objects that are round, I usually try to use something to brace it at the bottom so it doesn't roll around all over the place. Now I'm just using a couple of these little wood pieces that were left over from a different project and I'm going to make sure that it's nicely centered. Using matte Mod Podge and a small brush, I'm going to paint the Mod Podge where the label is going to be on my teapot. Now you don't want a ton of Mod Podge on here. You don't want it to be slippery or slick. You just want enough on there that it's going to tack down your tissue paper. I like to pick up my image using my paintbrush. It just helps me to center it on my project. And then once I've got it laid down where I want it to be, I'm going to gently start using my paintbrush and the Mod Podge and start from the center and then just push my way out. The one thing you want to remember always is have Mod Podge on your brush. If your brush is too dry, the tissue paper might tear. Always have a little bit of Mod Podge and if you missed some spots underneath here like I did, I didn't go far enough at the bottom, just very gently try and pull that up. But once it's stuck down, it's not going to come up unless it tears. 
then you're just going to continue working on this like you would regular paper, pushing those bubbles out. The other thing I do is I pounce on it. So I take my paintbrush and I dip it in a little bit of Mod Podge again and I use a pouncing motion up and down on any wrinkles or any bubbles around the edges and that just secures that tissue paper down even more. I decided to cut out one of the greenery pieces from the other label and cut it into a nice round circle so it could fit right on top of the knob of the teapot lid. And I thought this would be such a cute little addition. So I'm going to do the same thing with the Mod Podge. I also cut out another piece of greenery and put it on the back of the teapot where there was an original little flower design. Had a little bit of a raised edge to it so this would camouflage it really nicely. I love how this teapot turned out. I think it's absolutely adorable. I did also spray it with some clear matte spray finish just to seal it in and make sure that nothing would chip. Today's video is my monthly thrift store flip collab that I host and invite lots of different friends to participate. This month I have DIYs and crafts with Anna, Daisy DIY, Mom Dust Life Handmade, Domestic Diva DIY, Home with Rebecca Jane, and Hey Y'all Let's DIY. We are all going to be flipping something, whether it was from a thrift store, a garage sale, or something in our homes that we wanted to repurpose into something new. I will have everyone's channel linked down in my description box, and there will also be a link for the playlist. I would appreciate it so very much if you could go to their channels, make sure you watch their video, give them a thumbs up and some comments, and make sure you hit that red subscribe button and give them your support. Now let's get back to crafting. I've got this wood crate for $1.99. The thrift stores here, for some reason, they price all of their wood items super cheap. Of course, I love that because I love working with wood. I'm going to take three of these painter sticks, these are the regular size, and I'm going to cut them down to fit across the top of the crate. What I'm going to do here is just mark out where I need to cut, and then I'm going to use my utility knife to score it quite a few times just on the one side. Then I'm going to take my miter shears and I'm going to give it a squeeze. It's not going to cut it through because these sticks are fairly thick, but what it does do is leave a mark on the other side so I know exactly where to go to cut for the second side. So I make my mark and then I go back in with my utility knife, score it a few more times and then it'll snap really super easy. I'm just going to use hot glue to attach these to the wood and when you do wood on wood it turns out really well that you get a really good hold and I'm also going to leave about a quarter inch of a gap in between these so it looks a little bit more like the sides of the crate. I'm going to give this box a couple of coats of my DIY chalk paint. If you're interested in it, I have that recipe listed down in my description box. I'm going to do some dry brushing and lately I've been using these chip brushes and they are crusty with paint. So what I do is I don't wash the paint off when I'm done with them and then they get really hard and crunchy and I really get some nice lines when I'm doing distressing that way. And I started off a little bit on the lighter side, but then I ended up going a little bit darker just to give some added texture. Lately, I've been using my Cricut a lot. I've been doing some free printables. I've been doing tissue paper printing, but I dug around in my stash and I found this home sign and I thought, you know what? This is a great way to do something really simple and easy and that all of you could do as well. 
I know that Dollar Tree and lots of other dollar stores carry decals like this that are just so simple to just peel and stick. Now what I'm doing here is just giving that O oh, a little bit of a trim. He's a little too chunky for me. And for some reason, the E on this home word is much, much smaller than all of the other letters. As you can see here, that M is huge and it just dwarfs the E. So I wanted all the letters to look a little bit more the same size. So I'm just gonna continue trimming them until I get them in the right shape. Now I'm just going to stick them down and make sure that I press really hard. I'm going to also give this a good spray with some clear matte finish to make sure that those letters stay put. And then I'm just going to add some greenery into the box below. To add a little bit more character, I'm going to glue on this handle using Weld Bond glue. It is my absolute favorite glue to use on wood, metal, ceramic, glass. It holds all sorts of different materials together and it's perfect. And it dries within about 10 minutes so you could continue working on your project. It does take about 24 hours to cure completely. I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. My last project today starts out with this wooden candlestick, which was also a thrifted find for, I think it was $1.99, but originally came from Michael's. It still had the Art Minds label on the bottom of it, so that's how I know it came from Michael's. Anyhow, it's got some cracks in it, and it's not 100% nicely sanded down finished wood. So I just wanted to fill in some of that. I'm just using some spackle and a popsicle stick and then I'm just going to use my finger to just push it in and make it nice and smooth. I also have this large glass jar which has a whole bunch of bumps on it which I think are hobnail. I think that's what it's called. I've seen that in white milk glass and other different colors but I've never seen it in clear so I'm not sure if it's just a look-alike or if it's a true hobnail. Anyhow, I'm gonna use it whatever it is. I'm taking my Weld Bond glue again and a paintbrush and I just wanted to make sure that I got a nice even coat I'm going to glue the glass jar right on top of that wooden pedestal. I let it dry for a couple of hours, or it might have even been overnight. I'm not sure. I don't remember. I did this one quite a while ago. But I'm going to take some of the spackle, and I'm going to push it into the space in between the jar and the candlestick. And that is going to just make it look a little bit more like it's all one piece. It doesn't turn out 100% perfect, but I'm okay with that. I just wanted to get that groove a little bit more camouflaged. Then I'm going to let that dry for a couple of hours as well. I'm taking some fine grit sandpaper and just sanding down the spackling really gently. I don't want to pull any of it off, but I just want to make it nice and smooth. And I always check with my finger to make sure that I have all of the bumps gone. I'm also making sure that any little excess that is on top of the glass where it doesn't need to be is also pulled off. I'm using my favorite black matte paint, which is the high heat paint that you can get at the hardware store. This one happens to be Rust-Oleum, but it comes in all different manufacturer types. This is also one of my favorite things to use. It's a Krylon paint sprayer handle. And my goodness, does that ever make a huge difference when you're spray painting? I took this outside and I spray painted everything black. And then I decided that I didn't like the bottom black. So I put this tape on it and I spray painted it white, but because the wood was kind of really rough and porous and it just didn't look right spray painted. So now I'm gonna go over it with one coat of my DIY white chalk paint and that's just gonna make it look so much better.
I wanted to try something new on the bottom of this. So I'm taking some of the Home Decor Folk Art Liquid Wax. It's like a Mod Podge consistency. And I'm just putting a tiny little bit of black in there. I want this to be a black wax. I got the clear wax simply because then I could use whatever color wax I wanted and just mix it myself. So that's what I'm doing here. And then I'm going to start applying it onto the bottom pedestal and wiping it off with a baby wipe. I was having a great time experimenting with this technique. I put it on, wiped it off, then put it on again until I got the look that I was going for. I ended up with sort of a gray wash on it and I think it turned out pretty cool. Let me know what you think. I really hope you enjoyed these thrift store flips today. If you did, please give me a big thumbs up. It really helps my channel get noticed on YouTube. If you're new here, I would love for you to stick around. Hit that subscribe button. That black arrow will point you in the right direction. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. See you in the next one.